Hi and welcome to AppScript Office Hours. My name is Eric Kalita, part of the uh, Google Developer Relations team on AppScript. Uh, and although we're normally broadcasting from our studio in New York, that is currently has no power because of Hurricane Sandy. So instead we're here in my living room, but uh, you know, feel free to join in and ask questions. Or if you've already asked questions of the moderator or you'd like to have your question uh, not asked live on air, you can go to the moderator page embedded in our event and ask your question there. So let's get started with some AppScript news. Um, as you might have noticed, there is a there has a, there was a big release that actually went out last week. Uh, we didn't have a chance to get the release notes out in time before uh, the hurricane came and uh, kind of limited our functionality. So there are not official release notes posted yet, but we do hope to have those up soon. Um, but it was a quite a big release. Uh, one of the features I'm most excited about is the addition of the ability to send email from a uh, registered alias in Gmail. Um, so, you know, in Gmail you can configure that uh, you have the ability to send your from address to be a different email address and there's an auth kind of like an authorization process that um, that configures whether or not you can uh, send email from another address. And so in, in the Gmail app, in AppScript, so far you've only been able to send it from your own address but not any of those aliases. We've now added the ability to um, retrieve the aliases that you've configured as well as uh, send from those aliases. Um, so I think that's a pretty big feature, especially for um, a lot of people in the enterprise who want to have a group address that they share from. Hey, Francisco, do you mind muting? All right. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's one of the big features, and there are actually a lot of other things that came out of this release, and uh, I hope to have those release notes out to you guys soon. Um, so uh, th that's one thing. Uh, another kind of interesting piece of news is we did two blog posts, one yesterday and one today, both on um, app scripts that kind of tie into this election season that we're in. Uh, so the first one, uh, two of my colleagues, Arun and Kalyan, they worked very hard and got out uh, an app called the uh, Election Info app, which I think I'm actually going to share it with you guys right now. Let me just pull that up real quick. Uh, okay, screen share, here we go. All right, so this is the blog post that went out. So what they did is they, uh, using AppScript to build a web app, which is one of the things you've been able to do uh, for a little while now, they've uh, put together a web app that pulls data from a new Google API called the Google Civic Information API. Uh, this API is great, um, it kind of, uh, brings together all the different information about, um, you know, what polling places are, has information about candidates in an election, and, and a lot of just uh, of the details you would need to know. Um, and they've got it for, I think, so far, most of the United States right now, and some of that last data is trickling in. So they use this API to build a, a web app using the HTML service to render the front end, um, lots of jQuery to get some good uh, functionality. Um, and using URL fetch and map service to render maps. So I actually have a, it open here. We can take a look at how it works. So this is what it, uh, what you're presented with when you install the app from the Chrome Web Store. Um, and then you can take your address, uh, although not all data is there quite yet, or some sample addresses. And if you hit the lookup, uh, you'll essentially see that uh, what it does is it finds, you know, kind of like a canonical version of your address. Uh, where the nearest polling place is for the election coming up. Uh, excuse me, Francisco, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Would you mind you muting know? just until you uh, have a question? Uh, uh, the, sorry? Uh, oh, just no, no. mute your microphone at the upper right. Um, I, I mute it. I, I... Oh. Okay, perfect. All right, so uh, so yeah, so it gives you, gives you the ability, to, and it draws a nice little map using the map service to kind of show you where your polling place is. Um, and I think in some cases we may even give you information about early polling places. Uh, and what's kind of, you know, so any, any kind of web technology could call out to a RESTful API and, you know, render some basic information. But what was really great about AppScript was how easy it was to integrate with Google Calendar, Drive, and Gmail. So with these three buttons here in the bottom, you can very quickly create a calendar event for election day 
with this some of this information in there about where where to go to vote. Uh, you can save this information to a Google Drive document so that you can kind of you know have a carry along sheet if you don't have your phone handy that day. Uh, and then you can just even send it to yourself in an email, um, and then maybe uh, uh, you know have that in your inbox right at the top starred when it's election day. So uh, doing those kind of integrations was really easy with Google Apps Script, and uh, I think this is a really kind of shows you how quickly they could spin up something. Because this, this API just came out a couple of weeks ago. How quickly you could spin up an app that kind of does this basic kind of pulling data from here and pushing it there. And I think App Script can be a really powerful platform for that. And then the, uh, the next blog post that we just pu pushed out today was on uh, uh, instant runoff voting, which is, uh, if, if you're not familiar, there's kind of the voting system that you're most used to, kind of majority wins. Um, Voting uh, is 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 one type that's out there, but it has some some drawbacks, and uh, there's a lot of different competing voting systems out there in the world, although not many of them um, at at a higher or national level. Uh, instant runoff is one of them, where when you choose a, a candidate, uh, you can choose you're you're more free to choose like a third party or a less popular candidate because. Um, at the end of every round of voting, whoever's the, the least popular candidate of the ones that are on there, kind of they're eliminated from the race, and then the second choice of all of the people that voted for that candidate are then looked at, and so forth and so on. So it's kind of a way that you can toss a vote to someone you think might not win, uh, and then still have your vote counted um, if, if they don't win. Uh, and so, you know, it's kind of a complicated voting system, right? It's not as easy as just add it up and look at the totals. And so uh, a Googler, uh, Chris Cartland, he actually created this app script uh, for some voting uh, at his university back when he was there. And so he was nice enough to write it up and share it with us and, and even publish it to the uh, App Script gallery so that others can install it. And so he did a short blog post and even a great video tutorial showing you how to use it. Um, Google Forms to collect the data, Google uh, Spreadsheets to store it, and then App Script to kind of process who the winner would be. So this was a, a really um, another really timely uh, uh, application of App Script here shows how you can use it to kind of do voting. And he gave a great example, like, you know, you, Sometimes even just in, a, in an office, maybe you want to vote for what coffee flavor to bring in or, or something like that. You know, I, this is a really easy, quick way to kind of throw together a voting system and then um, kind of do some more complex types of voting. Um, so those are some things that we did recently uh, with, with App Script on our blog. Um, and I guess one other quick piece of news is that uh, my colleague Arun, he is traveling next week to Educase in Denver, a conference there. So if you're going there or if you're in the Denver area, you may want to look that up and see if maybe you can uh, see him live. All right, great. So that's all the announcements I had for today. Does anybody who's in the Hangout have any live questions? John, Francisco, Gnarly? Feel free to use the chat too if you don't have a mic. Post the one on chat. Oh, I didn't get it on chat. I just see hi Eric John Kaufman here. Is there more to it? Still still typing, sorry. Oh, no problem. <laughs> All right. So yeah, get your questions in there. Um, I guess while you're typing, we do have a question previously on the Google moderator embedded in our uh, our hangout, uh, which is just a simple question, is that when can we expect to see uh, app scripts embeddable in a Google site running on a custom domain. Uh, and they pointed out that there's an open issue since April 2011 on this. And it's actually, if, if I'm not mistaken, the most highly voted on, highly starred, starred. Like when you this star an issue question. in our... This is my question. Oh, it's your question. Oh, perfect. So oh. yeah, so... Uh, so yeah, when you how we kind of uh, our gauge how important an issue is, one of the ways is by looking at how many stars it has. And this one is currently starred by 191 people, which is our number one start issue. Um, we, we recognize that this is a, a really a big problem for our users, specifically because you may build a really cool script, have it all working on a test site, and then the second you go to put it on your your actual site that's on a custom domain, boom, it doesn't work. Uh, and that's really disappointing. And so we're we're not happy that it's been open this long, um, and we would like to see it get fixed. There are a lot of complex challenges around this um, technologically. Like it's not just just someone have the time. Like we've actually sunk a good deal of time into solving it, um, and there's still some more to go. So it, it, it is in progress. Like I know the engineer that's actively working on this problem uh, and working mm -hmm. with various teams to coordinate the solution. So it, it is in progress, but I, I don't can't really give you an estimate of how long it's going to take to be fixed. Um, obviously, it's been open for a long time, so I wouldn't 
I wouldn't expect it to be fixed tomorrow, but it, it does have people actively working on it right now. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, so, so John's question here in the chat. Can I use App Script from Google Forms? Uh, your forms are sent, uh, and you have a fixed set of questions, uh, but you'd like to add some additional data at the top of each form before sending, uh, for example, the number of respondents so far. So the Google Forms product uh, itself cannot be manipulated by App Script. You can't show custom text. You can't uh, create questions programmatically. You can't have behaviors respond to people making choices in the form. So far, although a lot of people have asked for that, and I think it would open up some, some cool functionality, uh, how forms work today is they are what they are, and they submit to a smidge spreadsheet, and then once they're on the spreadsheet, then we can start using App Script to uh, react to those values, to manipulate those values in the spreadsheet, etc. But the form view that someone would see cannot be manipulated at all by App Script. Um, but yeah, I know we uh, we actually have done a lot of work with uh, in the past Andrew Stillman. He's uh, someone who works in the uh, education sphere here in New York City, and he's done some great scripting before. And this is like for him. Uh, I, I think every time he sees me, he says, "When can we get some more uh, functionality in Forms? Specifically, dependent dropdowns is his big one. Um, I know Forms. Uh, a lot of people rely on them because they are so quick and easy to spin up. And then with App Script, you can do so much automation. But so far, our integration is purely on the spreadsheet side, not on the form side. Uh, the name of the guy you mentioned in New York. So there are uh, a team of us in New York. The, the, the guys you'll see on these office hours, uh, myself, Eric Kalita, my name is there. Uh, and then I'll type it into the chat as well. But we have... Uh, Arun, uh, and his last name is Nagarajan, uh, and as well, Kalyan Reddy, and finally, Ikai Lan. So uh, those are the my other teammates that you'll see on office hours. We're doing uh, the uh, hackathons. We have one coming up in Los Angeles in a couple of weeks. Um, and uh, actually, if you look following me on Google+, I'm all, uh, I have them in my circles as well. So. You can find them through me uh, if you want to find their plus profiles and keep tabs on what they're doing. All right. Any other live questions? Oh, oh, the guy I mentioned. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. So, the, <laughs> sorry about that. I misunderstood your question there, John. So, yeah. Um, if you actually look back through our, our video archive on our documentation page, you'll see that a couple weeks back we did a. a Google Developers Live, one of these uh, with him, and his name is uh, Andrew Stillman. So Andrew and then S-T-I-L-L-M-A-N. Um, and uh, yeah, he's done a, a lot of work with Google Apps Script in the past. Let me just check to see if we have any questions on the moderator page. No, nope, that's it so far. All right, any other live questions? I figured, it, I figured it might be a slow day for questions. I know that, uh, oh, here we go. Hackathon in Europe. Uh, that's a good question. So um, we have been trying to think about where we could do hackathons. Uh, we did one in um, Austin, Texas uh, last quarter, and we're doing the one in Los Angeles this quarter. Obviously, for us, getting around in the United States is a bit easier than, than going abroad, but um, it's definitely on the table. I think, I think anything is on the table. Um, I think especially if you could prove that there, if we could get people showing interest beforehand, right? If there was, a, let's say, a Google developer group, a GDG, that uh, is showing a lot of interest in AppScript, Script, that has a lot of people coming and building on AppScript, Script, or have given talks on AppScript, Script, you know, that shows us that you know we're definitely going to get a lot of worth out of uh, travel, uh, traveling that far. So I think the, you know, if you'd like to bring us somewhere locally, uh, you could probably make a case for it, and, and getting getting interest up would probably help do that. Um, and then in regards to the East Coast, we've done a number on the East Coast before, and that's why we were kind of focusing on the West Coast uh, more recently. I know we did some in Boston in the past, and, and New York is easy for us since most of us are based in New York. Um, so we'll probably see some of those come up again in New York or on the East Coast, um, but I'm not sure exactly when. Um, but, and I think one of the things we're trying to focus on going forward now that this GDL technology, um, you know, normally in our studio today on a Hangout, um, is is kind of 
a little uh, worn in at this point, like it's, we're, we're used to it and it's working well, is that you know, using this technology, we have the ability to reach a really wide audience of people all at once. You know, um, uh, and not to mention the recording is up on YouTube uh, there forever. So when we do that hackathon, it kind of has a, you know, a one-time use. All that effort gets kind of burnt up in a one-time use versus these GDLs. Anybody in the world can join. And uh, so I think we're, we're going to probably see us increase the number of these GDLs that we do, and we're working on that this quarter. Um, but I think we'll probably still continue the hackathons, um, but just maybe not uh, increasing the number. Um, and you mentioned there you did one hackathon in Zurich with Nicholas. Uh, yeah, he's he's over there, and I know he's doing some great work, um, specifically around the Google Drive uh, SDK, but uh, other products as well. So um, I think there's the possibility of us making a trip out to Europe, but it may not be uh, before Christmas. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so uh, if you have any last questions, get them in now. Otherwise, uh, we'll probably be back next week. Um, I know there's some plans. Uh, Arun and Kellyan, who worked on that election info app, have some plans to do kind of like a, some deeper dive into how they built it. You know, they had to th really build it quickly in order to get it out in time for the, uh, the election cycle. So uh, they didn't have time to kind of write up a lot of exhaustive uh, information about it, but they're, they're working on some blog posts, and I think they're planning on doing a GDL as well. So I think if you, uh, you want to see kind of the life cycle of a, a web app in AppScript, that's something they'll be able to get you more information on in the coming weeks. Um, but we're, we're also going to stick with, for now at least, our, our Thursday's schedule of office hours. We alternate between uh, what is the afternoon in New York and the morning in New York, just so we can cover different time zones. So. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, uh, if you could wait till next Thursday. But if you can't, we're also on Stack Overflow answering your questions there, and we also have a great community of of contributors. Uh, we got another question here from Francisco. Okay, so you're saying that uh, your Google Apps Premier reseller told you to um, go to Google Enterprise Support about a problem of Stack Overflow. So uh, you know, I'd say Stack Overflow is our primary support mechanism for App Script. Um, uh, we're 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 that we're on there a lot, uh, and we also like to rely on the fact that we have a community that is very knowledgeable. Um, that said, if if there are other avenues that you're being told to use, I guess uh, try to use those as well. But uh, I'd say I check keep keep plugging away on app, on Stack Overflow for a question and answer type questions. And then if you're experiencing an actual issue, uh, you know, it makes sense to go straight to the issue tracker. I see quite often people will go to Stack Overflow and say, ah, I see a bug. Okay, well, uh, I don't think many people are going to be able to fix that straight away from Stack Overflow. I mean, unless you're making a, an error or, or they know of a workaround straight away. But if you, if you actually do notice a, a bug or a missing feature, you can go straight to the issue tracker just make sure you search first, because someone has likely already opened that, um, and if not, open an issue there. And then, you know, we we monitor that pretty aggressively to make sure that we stay on top of new bugs. Um, so it's only if you if you have a more of a Stack Overflow, we kind of say it's more for a question and answer. You don't know how to do something, you don't know the best way to do something, you're not sure about why certain functionality uh, isn't behaving the way you thought it would behave. Um, that's really the what Stack Overflow is best for. All right. Well, I guess that about wraps it up for today. Thanks, everybody, for joining, uh, and hopefully I'll see you next week. All right, bye-bye.